But if we were living for God, this stuff would absolutely evaporate. And I want to underscore here, that doesn't mean be obnoxious. It doesn't mean be a jerk. It doesn't mean carry yourself in an unkind way. Not at all. What it means is you can be deferential. You can be kind. You can be gracious. You can be all of those things, but still live for God. Don't be afraid to stand up and be counted. Don't be afraid to be the one who's the odd man out. Stop living your life because of those who sit around. They're just sitting, and if you stand for what's truth, they're going to sit, and if you don't, they're going to sit. Why do you live your life for them? Great Controversy, page 460. Whatever may be their profession... It is only those who are world servers at heart that act from policy rather than principle on religious things. We should choose what is right because it is right and leave the consequences with God. Hallelujah. Lord, give us a hundred men that do that. Just a hundred, Lord. Just one hundred men that will do the right thing. And I'm talking from the top down in this church. We should do what is right because it is right and leave the consequences with God. Stop the posturing. Stop the politics. We should live our lives as an audience for one. To men of principle, faith, and daring. I love that. Daring. The world is indebted for its great reforms. The Herod Antipasas of the world never did anything great. The only reason you even know who he is is that he cut off a great man's head. But those who have really done something, those who have really made an impact on this world have been men of faith, men of principle, men of daring. By such men, the work of reform for this time must be carried forward. Where are those men? And where are those women? 5T 136, when the religion of Christ is most held in contempt, when His law is most despised, then should our zeal be the warmest and our courage and firmness the most unflinching to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few. This will be our test. At this time, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others, courage from their cowardice, and loyalty from their treason. Whoo! Because of those who sat. My job as a communicator is to try and ensure that you won't forget this message. That's not easy. Because we are bombarded with a cacophony of different sounds and noises and all kinds of people, different messages, different signals coming into us. And here the preacher has to stand up in this Hollywood world, in this this world of Madison Avenue, and he has to say something meaningful. She has to say something meaningful from the Word of God, and not just something meaningful, but something rememberable. So every time I preach a message, I think to myself, how are they going to remember this? Not just a feel-good sermon at the GYC. It's a, whoo, you know, wow, that sermon really blessed me. Now listen, do you have any of that leftover pasta in your room? And I was, I was meditating on this, and I was saying, Lord, I need a hook. I need a hook. I want to hang this sermon on a hook. I want to hang this sermon on a hook that people won't forget, and the Lord gave it to me. Now, I have been accused of inventing words. But to the best of my knowledge, I don't do that. And I take great offense at it, by the way. <laughs> Someone came up and said, Are you, you made up a word. And I said, really? What word did I make up? And they you know, say some word, and I say, look it up in the dictionary. It's there. Now, a couple times I've said wrong words, but here I am unabashedly, unashamedly making up a word. It's my own word, and I'm going to write the American Heritage Dictionary. I'm going to write somebody, and if they won't take it, I'm going to use it anyway, and I want you to start using it, and here's the word. It's the putting together the contraction of two words, God and audience. Gaudience. What do you think? It's not bad, is it, Carlos? I mean, it's not bad. Gaudience. Let's live our lives for the Gaudience. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? You're smelling what I'm cooking. 
You are either going to live your life for those who sit or you are going to live your life for Gaudium's. There are people in this room today who are facing issues of peer pressure in their lives. There are people in this room today, there's not a doubt in my mind, that have significant issues of peer pressure in their lives that they are acquiescing to, that they are capitulating to. They know that God has called them to stand and be counted. Whether it's a personal issue, whether it's a familial issue, we're slaves sometimes to our family's expectations. Maybe it's an issue in your school. It could even be an issue in the church. It could even be an issue in your job. God is calling you to stand and be counted, and many of us are counting the cost rather than acting on principle, doing what's right, and leaving the consequences with God. We are calculating, we're politicking, we're considering those who sat, and we're deciding what to do. And today you say, I want to live for Godians. He alone is my audience. I want to live for Him. I want to die for Him. I want to speak for Him. I want to think for Him. 